who's in the mood for 20 remarkable partnerships that defy societal norms and stereotypes. From age gaps that span generations to unconventional pairings that transcend cultural boundaries, these couples prove that love knows no boundaries. Everybody say, aww. Prepare to be inspired as we delve into heartwarming stories that challenge our preconceived notions and remind us that true connection goes beyond appearances. Join us on this journey as we explore the beautiful tapestry of human relationships. These are the 20 most unusual couples proving that love is blind. Number 20, Sean Stephenson and Mindy Kniss. Some women don't like dating shorter men, but Mindy Kniss doesn't mind. She is 4 foot 11 and dating Sean Stephenson, who is 2 feet 8 inches tall. They are certainly not a conventional couple, but that doesn't mean they're not in love and not made for each other. Sean and Mindy are motivational speakers who met in 2009 through a friend. Mindy moved to Chicago to be closer to Sean, and they married three years later in 2012. Sean says it was a joy to be married to Mindy, and there isn't a day he doesn't tell how much he loves her. Sean says that people think Mindy is sweet for being in love with her, but he jokes that he's the saint of the marriage and takes care of her. And, as you might expect, they receive a lot of hate from internet trolls, especially those saying he couldn't satisfy her sexually due to his size. People also say Mindy is only with Sean for his money. Mindy says that although it wasn't love at first sight, she wanted to set the record straight that being disabled doesn't mean they can't have a fulfilling sex life. Mindy said that Sean was one of the most sexual people she had ever met. Now, it's time for the odd topic. It's time for a couple of couples. On the left, we have Tyler Barker and Chantel Stedman, and on the right, we have Edmilson Cantara and Corrine D'Souza. Let's start with Tyler and Chantel. Despite their looks, they're both 15 years old. While Chantel looks 15-ish, Tyler very much doesn't, which has caused a lot of issues and judgmental stares for the pair. Despite that, they persevered with their love and even have a baby. As for the couple on the right, as you can see, Corrine has some pretty serious disfigurements. But love is blind, and Edmilson just doesn't care. And good for him. From what we hear, they are a wonderful couple. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19, Kyle Jones and Marjorie McCool. If you were to see 31-year-old Kyle Jones and 91-year-old Marjorie McCool together, you might assume they were grandmother and grandson. But in 2014, Kyle and Marjorie were lovers, and it's not a concept many people can wrap their heads around. Kyle loves older women. I'm wired towards older women. And Marjorie was one of five women over the age of 60 that Kyle was dating at the time. He was technically single, but loved dating older women and even taking them home to his mother to meet, who was 51 years old. While we can sadly assume that Marjorie is now dead, given the time that has passed since their relationship was made public, many people were shocked about the intimate details. The great-grandmother said she could put her legs on his shoulders, and they had a great love life. In 2014, they had been dating for five years, and Kyle said the sex was great. He said it was hard to explain his attraction to older women, and Marjorie in particular, but he loved her platinum hair, her skin, and the older features. He also said he liked the necklines, the wrinkles, and the natural hang of the boobs in older women. Number 18, Paulo Gabriel da Silva Barros and Catiusia Hoshino Barros. Brazilian couple Paulo and Catiusia Barros are the shortest couple in the world. Their combined height is the typical height of the average individual person, 5 feet 8 inches. Paolo and Catiusia have two different types of dwarfism, causing Paul to be just 34.8 inches and Catiusia 35.2 inches. Paul has a rare genetic condition, diastrophic dysplasia dwarfism, while Catiusia has achondroplasia dwarfism. The pair met on social media and began talking on a messaging app. For Paolo, who works as a legal secretary, it was love at first sight. He thought Katiusia was beautiful from the moment he saw her. 
However, it wasn't the same for Katiusia, who owns her own beauty salon. She said she found Paolo annoying and didn't like his cheap pickup lines. Paolo said Katiusia thought he was trying to flirt, but he was just being nice. But according to Katiusia, he was a really boring guy. In the end, Katiusia ended up blocking Paolo and didn't unblock him until 18 months later. Eight years after they started talking again, Paolo dropped the question and they were married in 2016. Number 17, Shi Tianrong and Mochi. We can't help who we love, but most of us love real people. Not Shi Tianrong though, this man is married to a doll. The 36-year-old man from Hong Kong has had girlfriends before, but realized he was more attracted to dolls after finding they were easier to date than human girlfriends. He first learned about his attraction 10 years before his story went viral after seeing a doll in a shop in Hong Kong. As it cost more than $10,000, he had to set his feelings aside as he couldn't afford to spend that much. But she couldn't let his feelings die completely. In 2019, he found a silicon doll online that was on sale for a little over $1,000, a much more affordable price. She purchased her, now named Mochi, and the rest is history. She says he has never had sex with her, or even kissed her, because he doesn't want to damage her sensitive skin. However, he does shower her with gifts and attention, and has even purchased her multiple pairs of expensive shoes, luxurious clothing, and an iPhone 12. Not long after dating Mochi, he realized he was in love with her and wanted to marry her. The pair wed in front of Shi's friends and family in 2021. Now, they have a baby together. Not a real baby, of course, just another doll. Number 16, Sene Masilela and Helen Shabangu. The median age for people to get married in the United States is 28.6 years old. At that age, you might feel mature and ready to make a lifelong commitment to the person you love. But Sanye Masiela was just 8 years old when he tied the knot and has been married twice. There is a 53-year age gap between him and his wife, 62-year-old Helen Shabangu, who was already married to a 67-year-old man and has five children. Sanye, from Tishwani in South Africa, became the world's youngest groom when he married Helen in 2020 in his home. He remarried her a year later in Helen's home, with Tishwani's family giving £500 to the bride and spending £1,000 on the wedding. And as gross and absurd as it is to marry an eight-year-old, it's not a conventional marriage. They got married in a ritual to please their ancestors. They had to get married twice, as tradition dictates that they must declare their vows in both of their homes. While there was definitely international outcry when they got married the first time, their families were quick to point out that the marriage was purely symbolic. They don't live together, nor do they have sexual relations. Sanye's mother, Patience, says their marriage was what their ancestors wanted, and something terrible would have happened to their family if they didn't do it. And what does Sanye think about the whole situation? Well, Sanye says he was happy he married Helen, but intends to go to school, study hard, and marry a lady his own age when he's older. Number 15, Pixie Fox and Justin Jedlisa. In 2016, we learned about the real-life versions of the Ken and Barbie dolls, Justin Jedlisa and Pixie Fox. While they aren't a couple, they've spent more than $450,000 on cosmetic surgery between them to look like human versions of the dolls. Pixie, a model, has had 17 operations, including rib removal, four breast enhancement surgeries, and liposuction. She also intended to have hip and bum implants, Justin has had over 340 procedures, including implants in his back, cheeks, shoulders, biceps, and bum, and multiple rhinoplasties. Justin was fresh out of a marriage, so the pair intended to live together, recover from their latest surgeries, and commit to achieving their dream looks together. Pixie said it was hard to find someone willing to be a part of the lifestyle, and that people don't realize the commitment it takes to look like they do. She said surgery is her focus, and she doesn't have time for a man. Instead, she works out five hours a day, and love is the last thing on her mind. Justin, who is a surgery consultant living in Los Angeles, says his extreme plastic surgery, and the celebrity status that comes with it, has damaged his search for love. 
He has a reputation for being an extreme surgery addict and loves pushing the limits. Number 14. Vern Troyer and Genevieve Callan. We all know Vern Troyer as the actor and comedian best known for playing Mini-Me in the Austin Powers film series. Vern had cartilage hair hypoplasia and stood at just 2 feet 8 inches tall. Sadly, Vern passed away in 2018, age 49, with his death being ruled a suicide by alcohol poisoning. He was laid to rest in Michigan, where he was born. Also from Michigan was his ex-wife, Genevieve Galem. Genevieve and Vern had been in a relationship for two years before tying the knot on January 22, 2004. One day later, on January 2023, Genevieve filed for a nullification. They became well known not only for their significant height difference, with her standing at 5 feet 6 inches tall, but also for their brief marriage, is believed to be one of the shortest and most infamous. After their ceremony in Los Angeles County Superior Court, Genevieve allegedly broke off the marriage due to Vern's sex addiction and domestic abuse when under the influence of alcohol. Genevieve said that Vern used to beat her while intoxicated. But Vern's story was different. He said he was never married to her and said Genevieve had done it for the money. Allegedly, she had asked Vern for spousal support. However, according to Genevieve's lawyer, Vern was the one who was looking for financial assistance. He apparently claimed that his marriage with Genevieve would have impacted his MBC agreement. Vern says there was no legal marriage, but said through his lawyers that the marriage was a media act. Number 13, Martin Van Buren and Anna Haining Swan. You might not be familiar with Martin Van Buren and Ada and Anna Haining Swan, but they were once the tallest married couple. Canadian woman Anna was 7 feet 11 inches tall, while her husband, American man Martin, was 7 feet 9 inches tall. When they married in 1871, they claimed the Guinness World Record for the tallest married couple. Martin was average sized when he was born in Kentucky, but was over 6 feet tall by age 12 or 13. After being a captain in the Civil War, he returned to Kentucky and became a school teacher. Anna was born in Nova Scotia, Canada, and weighed 16 pounds at birth. She was the third of 13 children, and all her siblings were of average height. By the time Anna was 4 years old, she was 4 feet 6 inches tall, and stood at 6 feet 2 inches tall by her 11th birthday. Anna finally measured 7 feet tall by age 15. Martin and Anna met when a circus was on tour in Canada. Martin and Anna got to know each other and later married. The wedding was so highly publicized that thousands of people tried to attend, and Queen Victoria gave them two diamond-studded gold watches as wedding gifts. The pair had two children, but both died. Girl born weighing 18 pounds, she died at birth. Her second, a son, survived only 11 hours after birth and was the largest newborn recorded at 23 pounds, 9 ounces. Number 12, Ahmed Mohammed Dori and Safia Abdullah. Imagine marrying someone 95 years older than you. Safia Abdullah doesn't have to imagine. She did marry someone 95 years older than her. Well, if the man's claimed age is actually true. Ahmed Mohammed Dori claims to be 112 years old, and the Somalian man married for the sixth time in 2019 to a 17-year-old girl, Safia. Hundreds of people attended the wedding, which was held in Somalia's Gal Gadud region. After the wedding, Ahmed said that God had helped him realize his dream. He said he and his teenage bride come from the same village, and Ahmed had waited until Safia grew up before proposing to her. He said he didn't force her, but used his experience to convince Safia of his love. They then agreed to marry. According to the bride's family, Safia was happy with her new husband. But let's just look at the numbers for a moment. If Ahmed is 112, as he claims, the 95-year age gap would mean that he was old enough to be her great-great-great-grandfather. Ahmed also already has 18 children with five other wives. Number 11, Sultan Kozin and Merv Debo. 
While Sultan Kozen and Merv Debo are now divorced, their marriage made headlines for one particular reason, the height difference. Sultan stood at 8 feet 3 inches tall due to a tumor affecting his pituitary gland, while his new bride was 5 feet 9 inches. He towered above her. The couple married in 2013 in a private ceremony in Mardin, Turkey, four years after the Guinness World Records recognized him as the tallest man in the world. He had visited London in 2009, hoping his newfound fame would help him find a wife. Sultan said he found it challenging to find a girlfriend because they're usually scared of him. He hoped having a Guinness World Record and being known around the world would help him meet many girls, as his dream was to be married. Sultan and Merv met through a mutual friend. She travelled from her home in Hasaki, Syria, to Sultan's village, Didi Koy, in Turkey, to meet him. They had only been dating for two months, but knew they wanted to be together. Merv said that people told her not to marry Sultan because of his height, but she fell in love with his heart, not his height. Sultan was back in the market by 2021, saying things didn't work out because she spoke Arabic while Sultan could only speak Turkish. As a single man, he traveled to Moscow for a new bride. According to Sultan, he heard that Russian women are beautiful with loving souls, and he wanted a Russian bride to bear him a son and daughter. Number 10, Anton Kaft and China Bell. While we're unsure if they're still together, Anton Kraft and China Bell are proof that love is blind. In 2015, the couple was dating, and their love story made news headlines. Anton Kraft is a 4 foot 4 inch bodybuilder, while his girlfriend is a transgender woman standing at 6 feet 3 inches tall. Anton said he only dates women at least a foot taller than him. China said she wasn't sure about Anton at first, but the bodybuilder soon won her over. It wasn't long until they were loved up. China said she had never dated a 4 foot 4 inch man before and was curious. She gave him a chance and learned how much of an amazing guy he was. Anton said he feels like the luckiest man in the world. But it's not just his relationship with China Bell that Anton is well known for. He's also the only man in the world who has bench pressed four times his own body weight. But while he has the accomplishment under his belt, he said his best achievement was being in a relationship with China Bell. He said he might go down on one knee and propose to her because her name would look good with his. Number 9. Gabriela and Victor Peralta Gabriela and Victor Peralta are just like any other happily married couple, with one exception. They hold the Guinness World Record for the most body modifications of a married couple. Between them, they had 84 as of 2014, with the record verified at the Show des Record in Milan, Italy. While they have more now, in 2014, they had piercings, body implants, microdermals, dental implants, ear expanders, and ear bolts and Victor had a forked tongue. After they broke the record, they continued to modify their bodies, and their total quickly reached 98. Gabriela and Victor have been called the Cherubs of Hell. They met in Argentina about 24 years before their record at a motorcycle event. It was love at first sight, and they decided to share their lives and pursue their passion for body modification and implants, which they say is art. Victor's very first modification was stars on his forehead in 2009. Gabriella loved his look and started getting her own modifications. The most painful for Gabriella was her scarifications, which involved scratching or etching designs onto the skin. Victor says his most painful was the pigmentation of his tongue, which resulted in temporary breathing difficulties. Not everyone will love what Gabriella and Victor do to their bodies. Still, Victor said it's important to enjoy life and art. Tattoos don't make you a good or bad person, it's just art. There will be those who appreciate it and others who don't. Number 8. Amanda Rogers and Sheba not everyone who gets married to a person will be happy, and Amanda Rogers said that of her first husband. She had married a man 20 years ago, but the relationship ended just a few months prior. But what if you don't marry a person? 
It's a bit odd, but British woman Amanda, who was in her late 40s, married her terrier dog Sheba. They tied the knot in 2012 in split Croatia with 200 people in attendance. Amanda said Sheba had been in her life for years, comforting her when she was feeling low and making her happy. She said she couldn't think of anything more than she could ask for in a life partner. Amanda got down on one knee and proposed, and Sheba wagged her tail. At the ceremony, they kissed to seal the deal, and everyone threw confetti. While Amanda knows that her marriage to her dog isn't legal, she said it was a nice way to mark what Sheba meant to her. She said Sheba is always happy and never unkind to her. But are you thinking what I'm thinking? It has been over a decade since they married, and dogs don't live forever. Number 7. Jose Griggs and Jay La Cooper We don't all get the opportunity to live long and happy lives. Sometimes our lives are cut short. For the time we're about, we must make the most of it, just like Jay La Cooper. In 2009, nine-year-old Jayla was dying of leukemia, and doctors said she had two weeks to live. Her dying wish was to get married, so she did. Her parents arranged a mock wedding so Jayla could marry her seven-year-old friend and fellow hospital patient, Jose Griggs. They wanted the mock wedding in Dallas, Texas, to be a celebration of life and friendship. Jayla dressed in a white ruffle dress with a tiara and walked down the aisle with her father, Gerard Cooper. She then exchanged gold rings with Jose and vowed to be friends forever. After the ceremony, Jayla and Jose danced to their favorite song, The Love Bug, by the Jonas Brothers. Jayla said Jose was cute and she loved him. She was excited and happy and they had a lot of fun at the wedding. While Jayla's aggressive form of leukemia would eventually claim her life, Jose was expected to be on the road to recovery. Number 6. I Lied Patterson and Horison Greer When I Lied Patterson from Forest Moray in Scotland was told that her childhood cancer neuroblastoma was terminal, the five-year-old girl made a bucket list. On that list was a wish to marry her best friend. At an emotional ceremony one month before her death in July 2017, she tied the knot in a mock ceremony to her six-year-old friend, Harrison Greer. The wedding ceremony was to make it official that they were best friends forever. Her funeral was as emotional as her wedding. Hundreds of people turned up to celebrate her life at the funeral in Aberdeen, with many dressing as superheroes. Some also wore bright pink dresses in her honor. There was also a bright pink truck, a cavalcade of dozens of motorcycles, and a horse-drawn carriage in which her pink coffin was carried. At the service, celebrant Susan Newman said we think of Elida's passing with sadness, but we should also be thankful for her life. Number 5. Herbert and Zelmyra Fisher Zelmyra and Herbert Fisher are proof that love can last a lifetime. The couple were married for 86 years after tying the knot in 1924. Herbert died in 2011 at 105 years old, while Zamira followed at 103 years old two years later. During their marriage, they survived the Great Depression, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnamese War, the Civil Rights Movement, and 15 presidential administrations. They had five children, ten grandchildren, nine great-grandchildren, and four great-great-grandchildren. In 2008, they also made it into the Guinness Book of Records for the longest marriage of a living couple. Herbert and Zelmira said their success of a long marriage could be attributed to their marriage to God. They didn't believe in divorce or remarriage. Divorce had never been an option or thought. Zelmira said she didn't expect they would be married for as long as they were, but she knew she would not be looking for another husband. Before Zelmira died, she also had advice for couples in a bad relationship. She said marriage isn't a contest, so you shouldn't keep score. God put the two sets. It's the same team that will win together. Number 4. Alexia Shrout, Doug Shrout, and Jacob Shrout Mashafi. Polyamory is not a new concept. Many people enter relationships with more than one partner, with all partners consenting. However, it's less common for all three people to live together, marry each other, and raise their kids together. 
Alexia Shrout from Mile Me, Ohio, was in an open relationship with her husband, Doug Shrout, when she met Jacob Shrout Mashrafi. Doug and Alexia had two children together at the time. They had previously dated other women before meeting Jacob, but had broken up with them. Alexia, a body piercer, was friends with Jacob for three years, and they started having feelings for each other. When she realized she had feelings, she confided in her husband. Doug said they could see if they could make it work as long as she still loved Doug. Now they all sleep in the same bed together, even though Doug and Jacob are both straight and don't have sexual desires for each other. The Thruple now have three kids, with the first two being biologically Doug's, but they won't publicly declare who fathered their third child. Number 3. Jonathan and Ivoon Jonathan is below the average height of an average male, standing at 5 feet 4 inches tall. That's not why people stare at him when he's out in public. They stare because his partner, Ivoon, is 3 feet 10 inches tall. As of 2020, they have been together for almost six years and had a two-year-old daughter. Even then, people still mistaken Jonathan and Ivoon as father and daughter. In fact, some would query whether he has two kids rather than a partner and child. They definitely receive a lot of unwanted attention when out in public, and the Illinois couple now have a code word for whenever they spot people taking photos of them together. Ivoon chooses to just look at the people taking the photos as they put their heads down like they know they're being caught. Ivoon is shorter than the average woman because she has a rare condition called Fanconi Bickle Syndrome. She uses a wheelchair as a child, but now only uses one for long distances. Ivoon also uses a feeding tube. The syndrome causes a kidney disorder, which resulted in Ivoon's inability to fully develop and grow strong bones. Ivoon said the condition stopped her from enjoying her high school years and she would never wear dresses or shorts that would show her legs. Before meeting Jonathan, she had only been in one serious relationship, but she had never been in public with her six-foot-tall ex-boyfriend. Ivoon said Jonathan was different from the beginning. He never excluded her from family events and always made her feel like a regular person. Number 2. Elisane Silva and Francinaldo da Silva Carvalho Elisane Silva is known as the tallest woman in Brazil. Standing at 6 feet 8 inches tall, she towers over her husband, Francinaldo da Silva Carvalho, who is 5 feet 4 inches tall. Elisane had a benign tumor in her pituitary gland, which caused growth hormone overproduction. It's more commonly known as giganticism. While Elisane used to be bullied for her height, she plans to become a professional model. Elisane knew something wasn't right when, at 10 years old, she was the only one in her class, at school, and in her family who stood at 5 feet 9 inches tall. Around this time, she also started feeling pain in her bones and had pressure in her head, which she thinks is due to her fast growth rate. Doctors wanted to perform multiple tests on her to get to the bottom of it, but her family couldn't afford them. She couldn't get those tests until a TV network approached her family and organized for the test to be performed for free in exchange for her story. Elisane and her husband have a son together, Angelo, and he was already 3 feet 3 inches tall at 3 years old. Number 1. Bree Scales and Sheldon Nguyen Bree Scales was involved in a car accident when she was 6. She suffered a spinal cord injury and was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Bree said being in a wheelchair didn't only affect her life, but also people's judgment. For a long time, Brie had a complex about her accident. She didn't post any pictures of her lower body or of her in her chair. She also didn't mention her disability on dating apps. On dates, she encountered many people who asked questions about her body and sex life and had many unpleasant experiences. However, Brie's life changed for the better when she met Vietnamese man Sheldon Nguyen on a dating app in 2019. He helped her learn how to love herself. She said he was cool and handsome, and after meeting for the first time, she kept in touch and met regularly. Eventually, they fell in love and wanted to be with each other. Sheldon said he never thought about dating with a disability. He was hesitant because it was new, but every time they were together, they were comfortable, and they forgot the existence of the wheelchair. 
We love who we love, and we can't help it. Seeing so many different people finding love and embracing each other's flaws and imperfections is downright heartwarming. Which couple's story influenced you the most? Can you think of any other well-known lovers blind couples? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen now. We'll see you next time then folks, this is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.